Hello and welcome to how to create successful Facebook ads for your e-commerce business. Online marketing has many methods and strategies for bringing traffic to your online store and one of the best ways of doing that is using Facebook ads. In this video, I'm going to take you step by step as we learn how to create a Facebook page for your ads, how to create your Facebook ads account, which is different from the Facebook page, how to configure and install the Facebook pixel and of course what it's all about, how to research your audience and be able to narrow down and target the best and most relevant audience for your niche, how to create a conversion video for your ad whether you have a video from your supplier or not and of course you can go with images but videos are one of the best ways to showcase your audience what this product is all about and what problem we're helping them solve then we're gonna learn how to set our campaign goals and ad sets then you'll be launching your first Facebook ad and then you'll learn how to analyze your ads and scale your success. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Good luck with Facebook ads, quick intro, and let's go. So what is a Facebook page and why do we need it to run ads? A Facebook page is a page that can be found inside of your Facebook profile and the Facebook page is used to run ads. When a viewer will see your ad, he is actually being directed to your Facebook page and not to your Facebook profile. Therefore, your Facebook page needs to showcase your product, your niche, your website, or whatever it is that you're trying to promote. So let's begin. Log into your Facebook profile, and on the top, click on the plus, the create button, and then go down and click on page. Now, the first thing that you need to do is give your page a name. So you're going to call it by your business name, by your website's name. In my case, it's Doggy Dog Club. Next, in the category, type E so you can find the e-commerce website. So this is the category that you're going to choose. You can also go with products and service, for example, but I think that e-commerce website is more fitting to what we're actually doing here. Next, you can write a little description. Your one stop shop for all dog lovers and then go ahead and click on create page okay now that facebook created the basic part of our page now let's go on ahead and start optimizing it to make it a real facebook page so that our audience can start coming in organically and so that we can also start running our ads here so the next step after setting up your page's name the category that it belongs to and a short description we are going to move on to the images and in the images we are referring to the cover image that you can see over here and the profile image. So first things first, you have to take care of the profile picture and you already have a profile picture which you created using Hatchful. So click on add profile picture, go to the destination where you save that Hatchful folder and now find the file called Facebook profile image which is right here. So I'm going to click that and there we go, you have a unique profile picture a unique logo which only you have which cost you zero dollars and it looks professional for the cover photo you can search those stock photo websites that i mentioned a few lessons ago you can find them once again in the resources pdf that you have for this course so you can either use those stock photo websites to search up a new cover image or use the same cover image that you have on your website which is what i will do in this case and here we go we have the cover photo you can drag it here if you want to reposition just put it a little bit more in the center and don't forget that if you're using those stock photo image websites, just search up the niche or product or brand that you're trying to promote and find an image that looks relevant and connected to what you're trying to showcase. So we have the cover photo, we have the logo, everything looks good up until now. Go ahead and click on save. And here we go, we have our brand new page, Doggy Dog Club. You can continue optimizing it by adding, for example, a call to action button. So if you click on that, you can have a call to action button and direct people straight to your website. For example, go with shop now, write down your domain, click on save. And now there's a call to action button on your page. There's a shop now. So if someone clicks on it, they'll be taken directly to your website. Next, you can create a username for your page. When you have a username, you can simply direct people to your page in a much faster way. It needs to be unique. Nobody else can have this username. So just think of something unique because I'm pretty sure that Doggy Dog Club is not going to be available. Let's see. Nope, it's not available. So once again, think of something unique like Doggy Dog Lovers Unite. I know it's long, but once again, you need something unique. So go ahead and think of a unique username, add it to your page and continue optimizing your page. 
you can see what kind of tips Facebook gives you to continue optimizing your page. But what I do want to encourage you guys to do, if you have the extra time, is to start creating posts so that your page will look alive, it will look active, and this way you're also going to get some organic traffic to your store and already start to get the ball rolling. So in my example, I can create a post by uploading a picture of a dog and writing a funny sentence or something that will simply connect the viewers, dog lovers, to what we're doing here. Create a post once a day or once every two days. You can even create posts and schedule them to upload at a later date. So for example, start Sunday or Monday morning by creating 10 posts and schedule them for the whole week up ahead. So on one hand, you're getting organic traffic and on the other hand, you can run your ads through this page ready to get your hands dirty with facebook ads i know you are that's why you're here so in order to get started the first thing that you're going to have to do is create a facebook business manager inside your business manager you will create ad accounts and that's where you're going to start running your ads in order to get started with the facebook business manager just use the sign up link that i have ready for you in the pdf that you have for this course once you click on that link, you'll be taken to the page that you see here in front of me. All you're going to have to do after this step is click on create account. And on this screen, you will start creating your Facebook business account. Now you don't need to provide any VAT information. So if you didn't open a business account in the country that you live in, that's fine. You can even do that later once you see that this business model works for you and you'll start generating sales and profit. Just go ahead and enter your name and your business's name, which in my case, it's Doggy Dog Club and your business's email or just any regular Gmail that you have. Then just go ahead and click on submit and then your Facebook business account will be created. Once done, you'll be taken to the front page of your Facebook business suit and it's going to look like this. Now on the left side, the Facebook page that you created in this course should show up. If you have more Facebook pages under your Facebook account, you're just going to have to click on the arrow over here and select the correct page, which we will want to run our ads on. So I'm going to create an ad on Doggy Dog Club, just as you are going to create your ad on your page. Now, in order to run ads, we're going to have to create an ad account. On the left side, click on More Tools, then click on Business Settings. Now, on the left side, click on Ad Accounts, then click on Ad, and go down to Create a New Ad Account. Click on that. Give your ad account a name, choose your time zone, the currency should be US dollars, then go ahead and click on next. Once you do that, your ad account will be created and you will see it over here. Now the next thing that you want to do is enter your payment settings. So when you'll want to run an ad, you'll be able to associate your payment settings with that current ad account. And this way there will be no problems in running your ads. So click on payments, click on add payment method, fill in the correct details and then click on continue. You will not be charged anything at this point. Your credit card will simply be saved on the side. So when you'll start running your ads, they'll start running smoothly without any problems. And so those are all of the required steps that you need to take in order to create your Facebook business profile and create your ad account inside your Facebook business profile. So you have your Facebook account, you created your Facebook business account, and then you've created your Facebook ads account, which is connected to your business account, which is connected to your main Facebook account. This is what we've done so far. And as you see, it's all connected. In this lesson, we are going to install and configure the Facebook pixel. The Facebook pixel is a small piece of code that you are going to embed into your website. Once there, the pixel will gather a whole bunch of data and information on the visitors who are visiting your site. In other words, the Facebook pixel calls these events. Every time a visitor does something on your website, the Facebook pixel writes it down and it remembers this information. For example, when someone clicks on your ad and goes into your product page on your website and he's viewing your product, this action is called view content. So that's an event that Facebook Pixel is going to write down. When someone adds to cart or abandons the cart or writes their personal information to buy something from your website, or if they even enter their email address to subscribe to your newsletter, or if they're just browsing your site, everything that they're doing on your site will be written down as an event in Facebook Pixel's memory. Now, Facebook Pixel is kind of like a muscle. The more data and information you feed it, the bigger and better it gets. Now, what it does with all of this information is it simply remembers all of the events and the type of audiences that are interacting with your website. So the next time when you create an ad, Facebook Pixel will have a better picture of what kind of audience they need to reach out to 
the ones that are relevant to the niche or product that you are trying to sell. And once again, the more information that we feed the pixel, the bigger and better that it's going to get when it comes to optimizing and finding audiences that even look alike to the audiences that are correct for my website. So the more people interact with our website, the more Facebook Pixel will know how to reach out to those people and more audiences that look alike to those people. So this way we'll always be optimizing and optimizing and reaching out to better and more relevant audiences. That's one small example of what the Facebook Pixel can do for us and it's completely free to use. So in order to install the Pixel, head back to your Facebook Business Manager and on the left side click on More Tools, then click on Events Manager. Now on the right side make sure that you have the right ad account selected since I have a few ad accounts. I'm going to have to choose the correct one and in my case it's doggy dog club that's what i named my ad account at the end so now i'm going to see the events manager for my facebook ad account which i created in the last lesson with you guys now that the page loaded head on to the left side and click on that green plus icon connect a new data source click on the web option and click on get started now choose facebook pixel and click on connect now enter a name for your pixel. So we're gonna call this Doggy Dog Club Pixel, since we want everything to be connected. And later on, when you're going to learn new niches, you'll create a separate ads account for that niche and a separate pixel for that niche so that you will always have a separation between everything and everything will stay connected with its own niche and category. Next, enter your website address and then click continue. Next, click on Use a Partner Integration. Now choose Shopify. Turn on Automatic Advanced Matching. Click Continue. Now follow the step-by-step -step instructions as given by Facebook. So the first thing that they're telling you to do is go to your Shopify dashboard and click on Online Store. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Click on Online Store. Next, click on Preferences. Let's go back to Facebook click on continue. So we already clicked on online store. We already clicked on preferences. Now they're telling you to copy and paste your pixel ID. Head back to Shopify. In the preferences, scroll down to Facebook pixel. Click on set up Facebook. Scroll down and click add sales channel. Click on connect account. After you put in your credentials, go ahead and continue. Next, choose the business manager which you created in the last lesson. Click on connect. Now choose the right Facebook page. So we are on Doggy Dog Club. Click on connect. Next, click on claim page. Click on add page to connect. Next, you'll have to choose the correct ad account. So in my case, it's the Doggy Dog Club ad account, which I created. You choose your own ad account, which you created. Click on connect. View and accept their terms. Each one is going to give you a different pop-up, which you're going to have to click on the blue accept on the top. So this is the first one. Here's the second one. So there we go, you have accepted these terms of service. Go ahead and skim through these terms to understand exactly what this is all about. It's for your own protection and it's not that much to read. Next, head back to Shopify, click on done. Now let's head on to data sharing. This is where we're going to connect the Facebook Pixel to our Shopify account so that Facebook Pixel can already start working and track events on our website. So here you're going to have to turn on customer data sharing. Next, choose maximum so that Facebook Pixel will try to always get the maximum amount of data, whether they have ad blockers or not. So use maximum for maximum effectiveness of the pixel. Then scroll down and choose which pixel you want to use. And if you have more than one pixel, that's why you need to name them. So in my case, it's the Doggy Dog Club Pixel. I'm going to go ahead and click on connect. And as you can see, now my pixel is connected with Shopify and you can confirm that by the pixel ID that I told you guys to copy from Facebook. So let's go back to Facebook. Here's the pixel ID that they gave us. By the way, this is the old fashioned way to copy and paste. Now Shopify is doing the whole Facebook integration, which I just showed you guys. So if you would have copied this code and searched for it on this page, as you can see, it's the same number that we're seeing here on the Doggy Dog Club pixel. So I know that I added the right pixel. Now I'm going to click on confirm. Now the next step is to test the pixel and make sure that it's tracking each event. So let's head back to the Facebook page that we were on where we had to copy the pixels code and click on continue. Now Facebook is allowing us to test our pixel and see if it works. So in order to test it, let's write the website address over here and then click on send test traffic. Now let's go inside one of the products that we have and let's head back to the pixel. And as you can see, the pixel is active. We got that green circle over here. 
and the last event that the Facebook Pixel received is within the last hour. So now that we see that it's active and it got an event that we just did, go ahead and click on continue. And now we can track each event and see that each one works by testing it in the events manager. Click on test events in events manager and let's go ahead and test out our pixel and make sure that the events really are working. So once again, enter your web address over here and click on open website. Now let's go back to the pixel and here we go. We have a page view which just happened right now. So the page view is the event that I just did. Now let's click on one of the products and go back to the pixel. Now let's wait for that view content. And here is the view content. So we have a new page view and a view content, which is exactly what I just did over here. I'm viewing the product page, which is a view content event for the Facebook pixel. Now let's click on add to cart and see that the pixel recognizes that too. So click on add to cart. Let's go back to the pixel. And as you can see, here is the add to cart event. So as you can see, each event that every viewer will do on your shop will be tracked on Facebook's Pixel. So I hope that you guys understood everything that we had in this video. As you see, things are starting to get a little bit technical, but the more you work on it, the easier it's going to get. Believe me, everything is connected, everything makes sense, and everything works. If you didn't understand something, you can go ahead and rewatch the video. There's absolutely no shame in that. And if you have any questions at any time, you can always feel free to reach out to us. Now that we're done setting up our Facebook ads account, and our Facebook Pixel is installed and configured onto our website. Now we're going to learn about audience research. And the reason that you want to be able to conduct thorough audience research is because you want to be able to tell Facebook what type of audience you're trying to reach out to, what type of audience you want Facebook to bring to your website, and you will be able to spend your ads budget much more effectively this way. In the resources PDF that you have for this course, there's a file called Audience Research Spreadsheet. Open that file and save a copy so that you can start editing. When you open the Audience Research Spreadsheet, it's going to look like this. You have a column for questions and you have a column for answers. There's only four questions that we're going to need to answer. So let's do it together so I can show you guys how simple and effective this method is. So the first question is, who are the authority figures, influencers and big brands in your niche? To answer each question, use Google. So for this first question, I use Google to search for the biggest brands in the dog niche. And I found this website, which will show me the 15 biggest dog companies in the world and their most popular brands. So let's scroll down a little bit and start writing down our answers. First, we have a dog company called Mars Pet Inc. So let's add that as one of the answers. You want to find about four to five answers for each question, because when we'll get to the part where we're creating our ads and you will start putting in your audience's general interests, you want to find as much general interests as you can to broaden your search and find more potential viewers that are related to the niche that you're trying to sell. So this is one company for pet food. Let's scroll down and search for some more big brands. This is also a pet food manufacturer, which we already have, and so is this one. So let's continue scrolling down to companies that are not just food companies. Top dog toy companies, you have Mammoth Pet Products. So let's add that as one of our answers. So we already have two big brands. Let's also add Kong and a couple more that we will find down here. Dog supply companies, Happy Pet, and one more will be enough. Let's check out top vet care companies and go with this one, MSD Animal Health. So some of the general audience that we are going to try to search for and bring to our website are audiences that have a general interest in these big brands. But we don't only want audiences that are related to only these big brands. We want to broaden our search as much as possible and look for the right potential audience. So the next question and answers that we want to fill in is what books, magazines and websites does your audience engage with? For this question, I search Google for dog books, dog magazines, and dog websites. So three different searches, and here's what we found. So for popular dog magazines, Google already gave me these six, seven, eight magazines. So let's start filling in these magazines names. So we have Modern Dog, Dog Fancy. So we already have two magazines, that's enough. Now let's look for some dog books some popular dog books at that. So for this example, I went to Amazon because Amazon sells a whole bunch of books and there's a whole bunch of customer reviews so you can see which books are popular. 
So I just went onto Amazon and searched for dog books. And here we can see some really popular results. Let's add these titles to the popular dog books. We'll only take two because we also have dog websites to look for after this one. A Dog's Perfect Christmas. So we have two popular books, two popular magazines. Now let's add one or two popular dog websites. So a quick search on Google for popular dog websites. Let's go to the first article by Business Insider. So first for pet food, they're recommending Petco. So let's add Petco as one of the popular dog sites. I also know about them. I'm pretty sure that almost everyone knows about them. So one website is Petco. And let's just add one more. How about a site for dog breeders? Sure, we haven't spoken about dog breeder lovers until now. Let's go ahead and try to capture this audience. So we're going to copy this URL and paste it over here. Boom, new layout for you guys. Now the next question is, what types of events does the audience attend? In order to find the answer to this, what do you think we're going to have to write on Google? That's right, popular dog events. So let's see the results. 25 unique dog events in the United States. Sounds good enough, right? We need dog events and our audience is in the United States. So let's see which popular dog events our potential audience loves looking at or going to or has a general interest in. So Paces for Paws is one event, which is a dog race event. So let's add that as one of the events that dog lovers love to attend. Puppies and Patriots 5K Run. Let's add that also as a title. Clarence Bark in the Park. Another popular dog event, Rescue Run, which happens in Ohio. What we're doing now is we're really micro-niching our potential audience to try and find secret gems inside these audiences that other advertisers simply do not get to. There is more than one way to do everything, but this is one of the secret methods to really find the best potential audience inside these general interests for dog lovers. Let's also add this pause Chicago 5K walk run. So these are the names of popular dog events that dog lovers love to attend or have a general interest in. Now let's move on to the last question. What other relevant products does your audience use? Once again, I really skimmed through these to make these videos as short as possible for you guys, but you will need to research each and every one of them to see if they really are popular and if there really is a lot of interest in each and every one of these answers that we are giving in this spreadsheet. Now let's move on to the last question. What other relevant products does your audience use? Once again, a Google search. And here we're just going to write some really popular dog products that people love to buy. Let's go to Chewy.com, one of the most popular dog websites. So let's just add in some popular dog categories that relate to products. For example, dog food. For anyone who has an interest in dog food, they are probably dog lovers. They probably have dogs themselves, so they are a relevant audience. We also have dog treats. We have dog toys. So let's add people who have an interest in dog toys. We also have healthcare. So in this example, I want to write dog vet. People who have an interest in vets are most likely people who own dogs. Cleaning and potty. Let's see what else we have. Crates, pens and gates. Beds. Let's go with dog beds. Dog leashes, which is actually the product that I'm going to advertise. So dog leashes. And let's add another one really quick. People who love dog clothes. Okay, so now we have enough general interests to start running our ads on. When we create our ads, we will tell Facebook that these are the general interests that we are looking for in our audiences. And then Facebook will try to find the best potential audience to buy products from our website, from the same audiences that have an interest in all of these answers that we put here below. We will use this chart very, very soon when we'll start creating our ads. So far, we are preparing just as we've prepared in the last lesson, creating our Facebook ads accounts and the Facebook pixel. And soon it's all going to come together. Now you're going to learn how to create successful professional converting videos for the ads that you are going to run. Most audiences enjoy watching a good video of the product that they are about to purchase since it showcases the product in a much better way than photos do. Now I'm not saying that image ads or GIF ads are not going to perform well, but there is a much higher chance that a good video will be able to convert more customers. So let's start with the basics. In order to create a successful video ad, the first thing that you're going to have to have is a video for the product that you want to sell. Now, 
If you are working with suppliers like AliExpress and China, many sellers over there already have videos ready for their products. They are not usually professionally made videos, it's usually by some Chinese source and you usually have some Chinese letters in the video, but that is one way to get videos for your ads. Now, most US suppliers do not offer videos for the products that they are selling. We are going to have to get creative and make those videos ourselves. Now, if your product doesn't have any videos attached to it, there's a couple of things that you can do. One, you can reach out to the supplier and ask them if they can supply you with a video for the product. The second method is to order the product to your home and not a lot of people like this method, especially if they're testing out 20, 30 or 50 different products. They don't want to order them all to their houses. For one, it's costing a lot of money and it's consuming a lot of time. But that's another method that some dropshippers use. The third method is to try to find a video for this product through other suppliers. Although in this case, you're going to have to make sure that it is the same product. Otherwise, you won't be advertising the same product and this could cause problems later with your customers. So let's start with the first scenario where you already have a video for your product and you want to create the video yourself. If this is the case, then you can use services like Animoto, as you see over here. And this platform allows you to create your own videos for your ads. And it's made especially for e-commerce business owners like you and I. So the first method is to use websites like Animoto. And there are a bunch of more websites where you can create videos for your ads. Although once again, this one requires some work since you are the one that is creating the videos for your ads. Now, if you are going with a method like this, you can use free sound libraries to get some sound effects and background music for your videos by using YouTube's audio library, for example. They have a whole bunch of sound effects and background music to use for your videos so check out youtube's audio library and get those free sounds for your videos now the next method that i want to talk about to get videos for your ads is using a third-party service provider which will create the videos for you and you don't have to do anything besides sit back and relax and just wait a couple of days for your videos to be ready what am i talking about Let's go on over and check it out. There is a website called ecomvideos.com and what they do is exactly what I just mentioned. They will create professional converting videos for your video ads. All you have to do is sign up with them. Signing up doesn't cost any money. Once you sign up, you'll be taken to their dashboard. And once you're in the dashboard, click on video ads. And here you can see the three types of video ads that you can order from them. You can order a single ad, which I wouldn't recommend because you need to split test at least three variations, which is exactly what you see over here in the second deal. And on the third one, you have four variations, which is also good, but I would like you to first nail down three variations, see that it works for you, then move on to four. What you're getting here are three ad variations, which means three different videos for your products, which means the first three to five seconds are going to be different. And this is very, very crucial to when you are creating video ads, different video ads and testing out different video strategies. The first three seconds are always very crucial to whether the potential viewer is going to stay and click on this ad or if he's going to move on to the next ad. When you're creating an ad for a product with only one video, there's a huge difference between that and selling the same product with two more videos to bring you to a total of three videos each one having a different three to five seconds. It will have the effect where the same person that saw this video, but when he saw the first three to five seconds of this video, it seemed like a different video, even if it's the same product, and they went on ahead and bought it. This is a very typical scenario when it comes to e-commerce marketing. Therefore, I highly encourage you to go with three variations for split testing. This way you'll always be able to spot one or two ads that are not performing well when compared to one ad that is performing well for you. And that is how you're going to learn how to spot the differences between successful ones to not successful ones and how to multiply your success and scale up those successful ads. Once you buy your video ads, you will see them on the order screen over here on the left. Click on that order. And here you have a text box where you can send a message to your video editors and let them know exactly what you want on your ads and all kinds of points that are important to you. Once you're done writing down your messages, click on send message and you will have a message history for each order that you put onto the system. Now to sign up for Ecom videos, you have to use the link that we have in the resources PDF for this course. This way you can use the code AutoDS when ordering your videos and you'll get a 10% discount on top of everything. So you'll lower your expenses. This way you can profit more 
and you'll have professional videos made for your ads. So use that link in the resources PDF to sign up to Ecom videos, and then you'll be able to see the dashboard and everything else that I'm seeing here, and you'll be able to put in an order for the video ads that you want. Let me show you an example of some video ads that they have created for others. So I'm just gonna play all three of these ads really quick. You won't hear the sound because it's in my headphones, but as you can see here, they're adding the text and they're making the videos look professional. They're working hard on the first three to five seconds, but also on the rest of the video to simply make it look good, converting, professional, and this is exactly what they can do for you. I hope you got a few good video copies for your ads because this is the lesson where you are finally going to learn how to set your campaign objectives. In other words, this is where you learn online marketing. So let's begin and let's take it step by step as we've been doing so far. In your Facebook Business Manager, on the left side, click on More Tools, then click on Ads Manager. Now Facebook will take you to your Ads Manager. Here, click on your Ads account. What we're gonna do here is create a campaign for our ad sets. After that, you're going to create your ad sets and then your ad, which will be inside your ad set, which is sitting inside your campaign. Don't let this get too confusing. Just follow it step by step and watch how it all makes sense. So the first thing that we're going to do is create our campaign. Now, before you choose your campaign objective, you need to understand exactly what your campaign goals are. Your advertising objective is what you want people to do when they see your ads. For example, if you choose that your campaign objective is reach, then Facebook will try to reach as many people as possible for the lowest price possible as long as it reaches and they see your ads. Another example is traffic, where in this case, Facebook is going to try to give you as much of an audience as possible to see your ads and also click on the link that you have inside your ad to go and check out your website. If you choose, for example, engagement, then in this case, Facebook is going to try to find an audience that will engage with your ad which means like your ad or comment on it or share your ad. So if I'm liking posts or if you're commenting on posts, then Facebook sees us as people who like to engage with posts and therefore they're going to show us ads where their campaign objective was engagement. And you can go on with the list. If you go for video views, they're going to give you an audience that likes to watch videos and they don't just skip after the first second. If you're gonna go for lead generation, they're gonna give you an audience that usually likes to subscribe and leave their contact information. And if you go for conversions, which is usually the most expensive campaign objectives, this is where you're telling Facebook that you want them to find people who usually respond to call to action. For example, adding the product to the cart or purchasing it, adding payment information and so forth. My recommendation would be to go for engagement in the beginning because on one hand, engagement is going to show you if your product is interesting or not. What you're telling Facebook is to find an audience that will interact with my ad. So Facebook knows who their audience is that usually like to interact with ads. And this way you can see if your product is interesting at all. If your product is interesting, you're going to get a lot of likes, comments and shares of wow, what an amazing product. Where can I get mine? They're going to tag their friends and family to buy the product. And this is how you're going to know that your product is interesting and your Facebook pixel will gather information in the meantime. It will gather the data that it needs to gather in order to run more successful ads in the future, which can be conversion ads once you know that your product is interesting. So I hope that you understood why starting with engagement objectives is much smarter than going with conversion. So starting off right, go with engagement. On the bottom, on the engagement type, go with post engagement and then name your campaign. And since we're also going to create an ad set and an ad inside the campaign, we're also going to name them. You can name it anything you want. Just start with something so that you'll have a general name and click on continue. Now, as you can see here, the Doggy Dog Club campaign has been created. Now let's start configuring it. So you have your campaign name, scroll down until you reach the campaign budget optimization. Now, if you have three videos for three ad copies that you're going to run, leave this option on for campaign budget optimization, which means Facebook is going to try to balance the budget between three ad campaigns and optimize them and see which one is working best. Once they see one campaign that's working better than the others, they're simply going to put more of your budget into the winners and less into the less performing ones. So if you have more than one ad set for your videos, leave this option on and then click on next. Now we're in the ad set settings. We are done configuring the campaign objectives. As you see, it really wasn't that hard. And now we're going to start configuring the ad set. So first you have your ad set name, which we already named. 
Now you have your budget and schedule. Like I've said many times before, our objective here is to spend the least amount possible while we learn to run successful ads. That is one reason why we are starting with post engagement campaigns, because first of all, it's cheap, but it doesn't matter that it's cheap, we still wanna succeed. And our post engagement is going to give us an indication if this product that we're trying to advertise is an interesting product for e-commerce. So once again, we're going to do this on a budget and we're going to succeed at that. On your daily budget, you should spend between five to $10 a day for two to three days before checking out your ad and seeing if it's working or not. Because in the first day or two, Facebook is trying to optimize itself more and more to try to find the right audience for you. One day is never enough to see if your ad is a successful one or not. The second day should start to give an indication, but the third day is usually the day where Facebook is already optimized and the ads are already giving you answers if this is going to work or not. And the difference between $5 to $10 a day is simply how hard you want Facebook to work to find this audience for you. $10 a day will give you much faster results than $5 a day, but at the end of the day, it really depends on your budget. If $10 a day for three days equaling $30 is too much for you, start with $5 a day and wait for three days to get results to see if this ad is working or not, which means your first ad is going to cost you $15. And really that is not a lot of money for everything that you are learning and implementing and also feeding your Facebook pixel, which will repay you in the future. So start with five or $10 a day. You can set a start and end date. My recommendation would be to leave this on because if your ad is working well, you don't want it to end after two or three days. You want it to keep running. So I encourage you to not put an end date, just leave it as it is. And you will be responsible for keeping track of your ads. You're not running 50 ads at once, so it's not going to be a hard thing to do. Next, we're going to configure the audience settings, which means we're telling Facebook the type of audience that they want them to find and show our ads to. Now is the time to open up that audience research spreadsheet, which you worked on a couple of lessons ago, because we're going to use that now for the audience section of your ad set. So first things first in the audiences, on locations, click on edit. Here, exclude whatever default country it gave you. Now, since we are going for a post boost engagement objective for our ads, it doesn't matter if we're choosing audience in the United States or the rest of the world. Our objective here is not to get them to buy the product, but rather to interact with our ads. And it's going to give us some good social proof for our ad, because once you'll have that post with a lot of likes and comments on it, you can use that same post with the social proof that it already has and create a new ad on it with new purchase campaign objectives to get Facebook to find audiences that will go and buy this product. And the reason why you would wanna go worldwide for your post boost engagement and not just for your target audience, which is the United States, is because this way, Facebook is going to find the cheapest audiences in the world to show your ads to who will interact with your ad. This way, you're getting the cheapest social proof and the cheapest testing possible to see if your product is interesting at all. So for post boost engagement, we are going to target the worldwide audience. Now you have to choose the audience age range. This is the part where you have to use your head and think what is the age range of people who will want to use this product. In my case, since it's a dog product, it's probably usually for dog owners. Dog owners are usually anywhere around the age of 20 to 60. Obviously, even people under 20 have dogs and people over 60 have dogs, but I'm trying to get the most and the most potential age range for the dog products. You can try to use Google to try and get some insight for the age range for the product that you're trying to sell. After you have the age range, you have the gender. So for example, if you're selling fashion and beauty products, then your gender will most likely be women rather than men. In my case, it's a dog product. Men and women both have dogs, so we're going to stick with all. And we're gonna move on down to detailed targeting. And in this text field is where you're going to start writing down those interests from that spreadsheet. Now in this text field is where you're going to write as many audience interests, demographics, and behaviors that you think is relevant for the niche that you are trying to sell. Not all of the things that you wrote down there will show up over here in the interests and behaviors. That is why we wrote down more than one answer for each question. So let's start off by copying and pasting here all of the audience interests that we have from that spreadsheet. You will do it on your side and I will do it on my side. See you in a minute. Okay, so I'm done writing down all of the audience interests from the spreadsheet. 
to the ad set configuration. Now, if you look here on the right side, you'll see that you have a new potential reach. 76 million people is way too broad for what we're trying to do here. For post boost engagement, having an audience size of around 10 million people is just about enough to not go too low and miss out potential audiences and not go too high and waste money until you start reaching the right audience. So as you can see here, I have dog breeding, dog food, happy pets, modern dog and pet co. All in all, we have a potential reach of 76 million people. Now let's start narrowing down this audience to around 10 million. So the first thing that you want to do to start narrowing down is to go over the interests and see the size over here on the right side. For example, the size of audiences that like Petco is over 10 million people. Modern Dog has half a million, Happy Pets has 5 mil, Dog Food has 48 million people in the audience size. So the first thing that I can do here is delete the Dog Food audience interest since it's way too huge. So let's start by narrowing down Dog Food by clicking on the X. Now it's been deleted from the interests and we're down to 24 million people who have all of these interests alike. Now what I want to do is continue narrowing it down, but I don't want to delete any more audience interests because I really believe that my potential audience is inside these interests. So the next thing that you can do is click on narrow audience. So what you're telling Facebook here is to find an audience that has an interest in these subjects, either one, two, or all, but they also have to like an additional interest which you are going to add here. This is going to help narrow it down because you're telling Facebook, I want people who like this and they also have to like one or all of these interests that we have up here. So if you're all out of interests, all you have to do is click on suggestions and Facebook will give you more suggestions on interests that are similar to the ones that you have up here. So you can either find an idea over here or you can think of one yourself. For example, I thought of dog lovers. And here there's an audience interest of 36 million, which is kind of big, but since we're narrowing it down, we're gonna go down from 77 million to 5 million 400,000. So what I would recommend to do here is to add an additional interest called engaged shoppers. This will give you an audience that has engaged with a call to action button at any time in the last week. As you can see here, engage shoppers, people who have clicked on the call to action button shop now in the past week. So you want to show your ad to those kinds of people who are interacting with the shop now buttons. And now our reach raised up to 13 million. 13 million is very ideal for the post boost engagement ad that we want to run. Now let's scroll down and continue with our ad set. Keep scrolling down until you get to languages. Click on the edit button. And here in the languages, you're only looking for English speakers. So click on English all. This way it will include the UK speakers and the US speakers. For us, English is English and we are looking for English clients. So once you chose English all, continue scrolling down onto the placements. Now the placements is where you're telling Facebook where to show your ads on their platform. So go ahead and click on manual placements. Now here we want to uncheck everything except for Facebook. But if your audience is a young audience, which means under the age of 18, you can leave Instagram on. So we're gonna uncheck everything except for Facebook. And here you only want to be on the Facebook news feed and on the Facebook videos feed. This means that Facebook will only show your ad in the regular news feed and in the videos feed for people who like to go to the videos feed and just keep scrolling and check out all kinds of cool videos. They're also gonna see your video along the way. Now on the next screen, you are finally on the ad. We're done with the campaign, we're done with the ad set settings, now we're finally creating the ad. But that is enough for this lesson in this video because you've been through quite a lot. If there was something that you didn't understand in this lesson, please go back and rewatch the video. Once again, there is no shame in rewatching a video again and again. It's your knowledge that you are feeding and these steps are very crucial to the success of your store and the ads that you are running. Now that our Facebook campaign and the ad set is ready, all that's left to do is to work on our final ad copy and then we'll be able to launch our ads at the end of this video. The first thing that we did is create a Facebook campaign. Click on edit over here to go inside the campaign configuration. Inside you'll also have the details for the ad set and the ad which we are about to work on. In the campaign, we chose the engagement objective, which means that we're telling Facebook that we want them to give us an audience that will engage with the post that we are about to create 
in the final ad copy. The reason that we want to go with the post boost engagement type is because we want people to interact with our post to see if this product is an interesting product. They will like it, they will comment, they will share. And this way we'll know that the product is interesting. Our Facebook pixel will already start gathering data and information for audiences that are relevant for our niche. And we're not spending a lot of money doing it because post boost engagement is the cheapest audience to reach out to and have our post go viral. Once our post goes viral from the post boost engagement, we can use that same post to run purchase campaigns or view content campaigns and other conversion settings, which I will talk to you in just a few minutes. So we chose the post boost engagement and that is the campaign objective that we have running here. Next, we click on next and then we moved on to the ad set over here. So let's click on that. And over here is where we set our daily budget, which should be from five to $10 for at least three days so we can see if our ads are interesting, if they're delivering well, or if they won't, three days will give you enough time to gather that information. One or two days is not enough to gather enough information to see if it's performing well or not. Later on, we move down to the audience demographics. We chose a worldwide location because for post boost engagement, you can just shoot it out to the whole world. Facebook will find the cheapest audience to interact with your ad. Then we chose the age and the gender. Then we moved on to the detail targeting. And here is where we narrow down an audience from billions to just about 12 million people, which is enough for post boost engagement. By the way, if we weren't going for post boost engagement, if this was a conversion campaign like add to cart or view content or purchase campaigns, then you'd want to narrow this down to about two to four million people. Since at that point, you're really breaking down your audience and you know how to find the audience that will buy your product. But that is for later on when our Facebook pixel is bigger and stronger and they'll know how to find that audience. We narrow down the audience by narrowing down the interests and telling Facebook that our target audience has to have one of these interests and also one of these interests at least. If they don't have one and also the other, this audience is not an audience that I want to show my ad to. That is the ad set and now we're moving on to the final ad copy. The final ad copy is going to use all of the information and configurations that we chose in the ad set and in the campaign. That is why the ad copy comes in the end. So let's start working on that now. The first thing you have is the ad name, which we chose when we started the campaign. Then you have the identity where you have to choose the Facebook page that will be connected to this ad. So we are going with Doggy Dog Club. Scroll down further until you get to the ad creative. And this is where you can tell Facebook if you already have a post on your page and you want to use that post for your ad, or if you don't have a post and you want to create a new post, which you can do right here. It doesn't matter which method you choose as long as you have a post to run your ad on. So if you already have a post ready on your Facebook page in the ad setup, instead of create ad, go with use existing post. Since I don't have a post yet, I'm going to create the ad over here in the ad copy. So we're going to scroll down and the first thing that you're going to do is add media, which means you're going to add the video that you have for your product. And by the way, if you don't have a video, it's fine. You can click on create video and here you can choose pictures that you have from the product using a ready template that Facebook already has on their system. And Facebook will try to create an engaging video post with the pictures that you provided. If you ask me, this method is not going to work as well as video posts. Therefore, I highly recommend to go with video ads. But if you tried your best and you know that your product is going to be a winning product and you did everything that you could and you couldn't get a video, go with this method. It should work as long as your photos are good, your text copy is good, and of course, the product is interesting to the audience that you're targeting to. So since we already have a video ready, we're going to click on add media, then click on add video. By the way, if you went with three video ad copies, good job on starting off really, really strong. I can already smell your success coming up close. So if you did create three different video types, at this point, it's enough to only upload one of them. And later on, I'll show you how you can duplicate your campaigns and then create two or three campaigns with the same settings or with different settings, whatever you want. But each campaign will have its own video ad. And that is what is important once you have more than one video. At this point, uploading one video is enough since we're only on our first campaign. So go to the directory where you save that video and upload it onto Facebook. As you can see here, the video is currently uploading. So let's give it a second. Okay, so the video finished uploading. You can see it over here in the ad creative. So we have the dual leash video. It's 14 seconds long. Your video should be anywhere between 15 to 30 seconds. If you want to see an example of my videos, I'll just click on play over here. 
So as you can see, there's also background music, which you can hear because again, it's in my headphones. It shows exactly what problem this product is solving. It shows how it works. There's also a friendly text and everything here is on point. This is how your video ad is supposed to look like. So once you uploaded that video, scroll down to the primary text and this is where you're going to write text, which is going to show on this part of the ad on the bottom. So you want this text to be engaging, use emojis, show exactly what problem this product solves and why the audience needs to buy this product. So go ahead and work up a good text for your primary text. Let me show you what I created. I'm just going to paste it over here. Dual dog retractable leash for dog lovers with two dogs control each leash separately, tangle free mechanism, and shipping is on us. Now, don't forget that while you're on this post boost engagement post, you're reaching out to the whole world, worldwide, anywhere, any country that Facebook will find the cheapest audience for me to interact with my ad, go ahead and show them this ad. But those countries will not be able to buy from your store because you only set USA in your shipping zone settings. So if people are interacting with your ad and they're telling you that they're trying to buy it and they don't have the option, check with your source to see if they will send to that country, create a shipping zone and let those people buy from you. The point of the post boost engagement ads is not to create sales, it's only to get a viral post in a cheap form and to test if the product is interesting at all, like I mentioned a few times before and to also start muscling up our Facebook pixel because it needs to optimize its performance in the future ads that we are going to run. So this is the ad copy that I'm going to use. This is the text that I'm going to use. Here is the video. Next, if you'd like to write some more text, click on add options, but you don't want too much text. This is enough. It's on point and it's precise. Next is the call to action button. Now you want a call to action button. What it is, is usually if you look over here on the ad, there will usually be a call to action button over here to tell the audience, all right, if you like this ad and you like this product, click here and go to buy it. So the call to action is very important. And in this case, we are going to use the shop now call to action. So click on shop now. Now you have to enter the website address for the product that you are trying to promote. You're not going to link to your homepage, but rather to the product page directly to the product page because that's what you want people to buy. So here's the link to my product. I pasted it over here and we're going to click on preview URL just to make sure that Facebook knows how to direct to the right page, which we want. So let's just give it a second. And here we go. It's directing to the right page. So we check that go back to the Facebook ads. So you have the ad creative when we uploaded the video, which is what you can see over here. Then you have the primary text, which you can see up here. And when they click on see more, it'll show them the rest of the text as you just saw from what I just did. And they will have the shop now call to action, which we added over here. You can see it on the ad on the right side. Once they click anywhere on this box over here, it will take them to doggydogclub.com slash this hold URL, which will take them to the product page where they can click on add to cart or buy now. So far, so good. Let's continue. Scroll down under the call to action. You will see the Facebook pixel where you will have to choose the right pixel. If you only have one pixel, it's going to show you the right one, but we already named it. So we know that this is the right pixel, the doggy dog club pixel. So that is about it. Our final ad copy is ready. Everything is set up correctly. We have the campaign where we set our post boost engagement objectives. We have the ad set where we set the audience demographics, their ages and their general interests. Then we have the final ad copy where we uploaded the video and created the creative for our ad. Everything looks good. Everything is ready. Take a deep breath. You are now ready to launch your ad. Do not be afraid. It's only five to $10 a day. And the money that you are spending is definitely worth the knowledge that you are acquiring here. So, the only thing that's left to do at this point is click that publish button on the bottom right. Before you do that, I highly urge you to watch this video again to make sure that you didn't miss out on anything. Go to your campaign settings, go to your ad set settings, see your final ad copy settings again, and then go on to click the publish button. 
Let's go ahead and do that together. Click on publish, publishing one of three. One is the campaign, the second is the ad set, the third is the ad. Let's give it a second to finish the publishing and then I'll show you what will happen on the next screen where our ads will go under verification. Okay, multiple items published, one campaign, one ad set and one ad were published. Now let's click on the X over here and go back to our campaign page. As you can see here, the campaign is in review. If we click on the ad set, we will see that it's also in review. And if you click on the ad, you will see that the ad is also in review. In just a couple of hours from now, Facebook is going to check this ad and they're going to approve it. Once they approve it, they will start shooting out this ad to the worldwide audience and try to get a post boost engagement for this ad so we can have a viral ad. Once again, our Facebook pixel is going to already start gathering information and valuable data from the audience that we are trying to get. And you will have a viral post and you will know if your product is interesting. If it is, use that viral post to create another ad. And if you wanna know when is a good time to create another ad with a purchase or add to cart conversion to start getting real sales and real profits, I will talk about that in the next lesson where you will learn how to analyze these ads that you just ran right now. Now that your ad is finally up in the air, let's learn how to analyze your ad information and the results that it gave you so that you will learn how to analyze your ads correctly and multiply your success on those best performers. Now you have your campaigns, your ad sets and your ads and all of these results which you can see over here. In order to begin customizing your columns, use the resources PDF that you have for this course. Over there, you'll have a link to a document file, which will explain every step of the way. I created this document for you, so you will have a much easier time customizing your columns and not spending too much time on it. Let me go over one by one and show you how it's done. Once you open that document file, on your ad screen, click on columns, and then click on customize columns. Once you're on this screen, use that document file that you have in the resources PDF for this course. And over there, you'll have a list of everything that you need to click in, everything that you need to leave out, and the order that you want everything to show up in to just make your job a whole lot easier. Once you're done customizing your columns according to the document, click save as preset and give your custom columns a name so that you will always be able to choose it when you are seeing the results for your ads and you can also set it as a default after you give it a name so that way you'll always be seeing this one first now let's go over each column and i will explain the meaning of each one so you are in your ads and it doesn't matter if you're in the ad or the ad set or the campaign it's just much easier for me to see the results in the ad section so once you are looking at your ad copy the first thing that you'll see is the ad name then you'll see the delivery, whether the ad is currently running or not. Mine is currently off, but yours should still be running for at least three days. Then you have your ad budget, how much you're spending a day on this ad. Then you'll have the amount spent, which is how much you spent up until this point. So if my budget is $10 a day, and so far I spent almost $15, you'll know that this ad is running for about a day and a half now. Next, you'll have the results. Now the results is going to show you the results for the campaign objective that you set. In our case, we went for post boost engagement. So the results for the post engagements is 13,417. That means that Facebook, out of my $14.62, they were able to give me 13,417 people who will engage with my post. Let's move on to learn more about that. Cost per result is how much money I paid for each result for each post boost engagement that Facebook gave me from their audiences. So my cost per result is 0.001 cents. This is a very good result. It means that I really didn't have to spend that much for each result that I asked from Facebook to get to me, which is a post boost engagement from their audiences. They charge me only 0.001 cents for each result that they gave me. And that is because we went worldwide and Facebook just went for the cheapest audience to give me the results that I'm looking for. And as you can see here, it worked. Let's move on. The reach is 29,432, which means Facebook was able to show my ad copy to this number of people. Then you have the impressions, which is 35,625, which is always going to be more than your reach. The impressions is how many people's devices my ad was shown on, but it reached 29,000 people, which means these people did stay a second to see the ad. Next, you have your link clicks. So I have 223 clicks. 
even though this campaign objective was not for link clicks, I was still able to get them anyway from my post boost engagement objective. Moving on, the next column is 3 second video plays because here you want to see how many people played your video for at least 3 seconds to see if your video is even interesting at all. In this case, out of 29,000 people that my ad was on, almost half of those people watched the video for at least 3 seconds and those are good results. The first 3 seconds, as I've said, are critical. The more people are watching 3 seconds of your video, the more you'll know that it is an interesting video and you did know those first 3 seconds. Next, video percentage watched, which is about 50%, which is what I just said. About 48% of the people watched the video when it came up on their phone, which is also a very good result because people are usually not scroll stoppers. They usually keep scrolling even after one second, whatever they're seeing is not interesting and they keep scrolling. Next, you have your video average playtime. So I know that my video was almost 14 seconds long. And if the average view time is seven seconds, it means that people are watching just about 50% of my video length. Next, you have your frequency. The reason that I added this result to the columns is because you want to make sure that people are not seeing your ad too many times, not the same person. Each person should view your ad one to one and a half times, which is 1.0 to 1.5. If your number is more than 1.5, then your ad is experiencing what we call fatigue. The same people are seeing your ad, and if they're not buying it and you're advertising to them over and over again, your ad is not going to give you any good results. That is why you should make sure that the frequency is anywhere between 1.0 to 1.5. Once it goes above that, your ad is being watched too many times by the same people. Therefore, you'll need to expand your audience size by adding in more audience interests. And that is how you can grow your audience size and show your ad to more people. So the frequency is 1.21, which is perfect. Let's move on to clicks all. The clicks all is the number of times that people clicked inside your ad, whether it was a link or not. As long as the click was anywhere inside the ad box, even if the click was worthless, it's going to be counted in clicks all. This is different from link clicks, which we just talked about a minute ago, because link click is referring to how many times a viewer clicked on a link on your ad. If there are no links, they just clicked on an open box, it is going to be under clicks all. So as you can see, 621 people clicked inside the ad, but only 223 clicked on a link. Well, it's not only 220 people to go inside my website, even if what I was asking was just a post boost engagement on Facebook, that is a really good result. But as you can see, 600 people clicked, 220 were links, 400 of those clicks were just worthless clicks, but they were inside the ad and I want to count how many times people are interacting with my ad. Next, you have your CPC all, which is your average price that you're paying for each link click. So it is still a low price, even though this wasn't our objective, that is a great result. Next, you have your CTR all, which is the click through rate for all of the people who clicked anywhere inside your ad in a percentage number. Next, you have your cost per 1000 people how much money I paid Facebook to show my ad to 1,000 people, 50 cents. As you can agree with me, 50 cents is really not allowed to reach 1,000 people. Next, you have your CPM, your cost per 1,000 impressions, which is how much you paid Facebook to show my ad to 1,000 people, even if they didn't stay a second to look at my ad. Next, you can see how many people commented and reacted on your post. So this is another form of post engagement that Facebook brought to you from their audiences. Next, you have another form of post engagement to see how many people commented and reacted on your post. But in just about a minute, I'll show you the ad where there you can see the exact posts and the likes and how much engagement it really got. Then you'll have extra perks, which if you got these things, then you'll know that you can move on to purchase campaigns and run another ad to find people to buy your product. So what do we have here? You have your content views, which is a view content, which means how many people went inside my website and viewed a product page. So from this ad, which all I asked from Facebook for is to get me some post engagements, which was great and it made my post viral. That's all I really wanted. But since the product was interesting and the ad was created well, Facebook was also able to give me an audience that will also click on my ad and it also gave me an audience which viewed the content. Now view content is very, very important. So, so far I got 60 view contents and I'll go back to that in just a minute. After that, I also had one add to cart and one checkout initiated, but that person did not go on to purchase. Why? I don't know. 
I can go and start analyzing that. We also have an abandoned cart campaign which Shopify will send an email to that customer and try to get him back. A few lessons ago, I talked about that and it's already configured inside your Shopify store. But the point here is that we already have enough content views to create a new ad, a conversion ad instead of a post boost engagement objective. The objective for the next campaign is going to be a view content campaign. Why? Because I already have 60 people who viewed my content, which means my Facebook pixel is already starting to get fed. Once you create a new campaign where your objective is going to be view content, Facebook is going to look for an audience that will view your content. Now, I know you're looking for purchases. You're not just looking for someone to view your content. But what you're doing here is you're feeding the Facebook pixel with the right amount of data. Once you start with the post boost engagement, then you move on to view content. Once you do that, you will start getting a lot of results for view contents. Facebook is going to give you audience that will click on your ad and view the content of the product on your website. Once you get a lot of view contents, you'll see that naturally your add to carts will start increasing more and more. And once you'll have 20 add to carts, then you can create an add to cart campaign objective. Once you create an add to cart campaign objective, you will start to see that Facebook is giving you a lot of people that are adding your product to their carts. And some of those people will start to check out and purchase your product. The next step after that is once you get at least 20 purchases, then you can create a purchase campaign. This is usually the most expensive campaign to run. And that is why we had to build it slowly and gradually starting from post boost engagement. After 20 view contents, we created a view content campaign objective and ran our ads on that. Then once we had 20 add to carts from the view content, we are going to create a add to cart campaign. Once you have 20 purchases from your add to cart campaign, that is when you are going to run a purchase campaign. Now your Facebook pixel at this point will be truly fed with the right audiences that love to add to cart and purchase products from what you are trying to sell. And it will keep optimizing itself from there. And that is where you are going to start seeing real sales and real profits. So yeah, you're going to have to create three to four ads until you start seeing the success. Do not worry about the $5, $10 and $15 that you spent on your previous ads. And do not worry if your post boost engagement did not get you any add to carts, but it should get you some content views. If you didn't get at least 20 content views, then your post boost engagement ad probably needs some tweaking. Check out your general audience interests. Check out to see if there are any competitors that are killing your product. Check to see what's going on, why you're not getting those view contents. And if you were not able to find the answer, just find a new product, create a new ad, create a new video for your ad. It's fine. 99% of the dropshippers do not nail it on their first product. And that is fine. The money that you're spending is for your own knowledge. Once you get enough knowledge, you can use that knowledge to generate lots of sales and profit and run a successful dropshipping business. I know that this was a lot of information, but it's very, very important to learn how to do this step by step. And that is exactly what I've been doing until now. So after a day and a half, this ad worked really well. Let me show you the ad on Facebook. Here's the ad. There's the video that I showed you last lesson. We got 269 reactions for this post, 47 comments, 20 people shared this post. And here you can see the people's comments. So at the end of the day, this was a successful ad and we want to create more. The next ad that I would create in this point, as I've said, is the view content. Once I get 20 add to carts, I'll make an add to cart campaign. Then from that campaign, once I get 20 purchases from that, I'll create a purchase campaign. That is how you build it. That is how you feed the pixel. That is how you analyze your ads and see which ones are working well. Now, if you created three videos for your ads, all you have to do is click on the duplicate button and give it a quick duplicate. Now, since I'm in the ads column, it's going to create another duplicate ad. If you want to change the settings like your audience demographics, audience interests, your daily budget or any other setting that you had, just create a duplicate for your campaign and edit out whatever you want from there. And this way you'll be able to test which video is the best performer out of the three that you have. And that is one of the best and smartest ways 
to split test your ads. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all of the best information that I can pass on to you on how to create Facebook ads, make them successful, learn to analyze them, launch the correct ads, and reach the right audience that will go and buy the product from your store. If you have any questions, just let us know and we'll always be happy to help you out. And there you have it. You now know how to run, create, and manage successful Facebook ads for your e-commerce business. I hope that you found it informational and I hope that you took notes so that now you can start implementing Facebook ads for your e-commerce business. Good luck with that. And of course, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or comments, I will personally answer them. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to always learn about your next step in your e-commerce business. And once again, Good luck with Facebook ads.